Bitcoinomics. That's our words. We're your host, Steve Miller Miller, and of course, me, Jim Jesus. This is brought to you by Bitcot and Fiendfo, music by Three Chain Links. Until our music composer finally gets around to making us something, Jordan, I'm looking at you. Uh, and it's also a new flag month. Uh, it's January, and uh, we're going to have Zombie Bob Murphy as our flag. You go check it out. It's um, lovers.com. Click the thing that says flagatory. What's up, Steve? Steven. Oh, not too much. Just sitting here being a gutter flag it. <laughs> yep. So um, I'm in my North Philly ghetto. <laughs> yeah. So you're the new the Lulbert host that we've been kind of hinting at for a while. I mentioned it this last night, but but everybody's been anticipating yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, me- meaning my net worth is through the roof. In addition to the salary of buttons that I get for hosting Freedom Feeds, this means I. Uh, may presumably have access to future flags or uh, print your own uh, Libertarians Against Humanity cards. Yeah. So, uh, well, yeah. I have professionally printed so ones, you but you can tell us of my celebritarian lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, if you if you if you want a deck of Volume Three, I got those. But Volume One and Two, I'm out. I don't. I only have copies for myself. But you got to. You have to donate. Yeah. Hashtag please donate. No, you don't have to donate. You're good. Please donate. <laughs> I'm yeah, actually thinking about having magnets made. It's either magnets, and there was something else that I was thinking about making. I'm not going to say it, but I'm just kind of like I'm kind of torn between the two. I'm thinking of stickers too. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to give them away as freebies, and I'm going to think of something. I'm not, the The plan is I'm thinking about having a contest about who can call into Christopher Cantwell's show and call him cuck the most often in a given month, and the winner would receive like a bunch of you know free stuff, including a flag uh, of their choosing, a Lulbert flagatory flag of their choice, but still still trying to work out. Like, and I also like the... You've got an incredibly solid libertarian business plan of making everything free and then retroactively charging people for it via <laughs> pleas for donation. <laughs> but that you know is, what? I have yet that to receive... is the libertarian path to fame and fortune. I have received no donations through this yet, and uh, I really don't care. I'm doing this for fun. I, I enjoy doing this. If you want to donate and kind of keep the servers up, or at least help me do that, because it's only like t- ten bucks a month anyway. But I I need it for um, uh, Libertarians Against Humanity and and my blog, which I never update anymore. But, I need it for cards. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done with the cards. It, they're on sale if you want them. But um, yeah. So um, yep. what's this uh, Team Bop thing? That, or not Team Bop? I'm getting them confused. Uh, <laughs> so, Jim, you and I have you and I have collaborated on our first meme together. Maybe. Uh, this is we uh, we yeah uh, we are the hollow notes of libertarian memes. Uh, in that I'm in North Philadelphia, and you are a middle aged male, and uh, as such. We have made a widely popular because the the other thing about Hollow Notes is that it was for wide popular consumption. Oh, okay. Like it it started off as being just for North Philly scumbags. They were called the Temp Tones when they started because they went to Temple University, which is a mile from where I'm sitting right now. Uh, and but they wind up wind up making these songs that just apply very very widely. And similarly, the memes that we collaborate on, uh, you know, are not going to be these small ball. Christopher Cameron no. is a cuck, although that's an extremely popular. Although, and that cucknado meme that came out is pure gold. Uh, I, I want to give a special shout out to whoever made that meme because that cucknado meme is absolutely it's it's dripping wet. It's so good. But I, I do I do like we, that. We, we like the the ones that uh, what I think is that that guy T has been making a bunch of them um, uh, of the the het, you know, the guy eating the American steak and het. Like you know, I don't want any of uh, anarcho capitalism because I'm. <laughs> I'm trying to make America great again. <laughs> that was great too. Yeah. Yeah. Get in the car. Uh, <laughs> any hoodle. Uh, so the, we've we've collaborated on this Tiger Beat meme, and it's basically a Tiger Beat cover. Those of you who uh, used to be teenage girls or used to have to live in a house with them, I have two older sisters. Uh, remember Tiger Beat magazine, and also Bop, which we reserve the right to make a future Bop magazine cover as well with a different politician but we made a tiger beat bernie sanders uh magazine cover and it's a an array of different pictures of the burn with a bunch of articles similar to what you would read in tiger beat with titles such as six drool worthy facts about the burn how to annoy strangers for bernie that one's in kind of a larger font so i feel it might be sort of the cover story Mm -hmm. responding to your parents all caps annoying questions about how you're going to pay for all that <laughs> Biden war in 20 
Biden war in 26... Bernie. Biden. Biden. No, we didn't make a Biden <laughs> Bernie war. Bernie war in 2016. Will the dream team ticket happen? Democratic socialism. So much cooler than regular socialism. <laughs> Eight things you didn't know about the burn. And my personal favorite, a Photoshop picture of two... Uh, oh, stop Photoshop. Six packed out beach... Beach, yeah, stock Photoshop of, of two dudes at the beach, and it's got the heads of Bernie Sanders and Karl Marx. And the title of the article is The Burn and Hot Carl's Day at the Beach, which was quite dank on your mm. part. That was all, that was all Jim. That was all me. Uh, but yeah. I think that uh, might be a little bit too yeah. titillating even for Tiger Beat, but uh, I thought it, I thought I'd prudent it in there because, you know, he's such a hot stud. Especially for the for the young uh, teeny boppers and tweens that read this magazine, they would they would dig and on they will some, sh- some Bernie they will Sa- have, like, Sanders six pack kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Someday. Uh, what I one thing I love about ti- this this has nothing to do with the meme we made, but one thing. Well, it kind of does. But uh, the one thing I love about Tiger Beat Magazine and the adult version of Tiger Beat Magazine, which is Us Weekly and People and things like that. <laughs> um, you know. Uh, yes. You know th- things that things that people who don't read read. Uh, <laughs> Us Weekly. Oh my God! You ever want to feel smart? Do the crossword in People Magazine. You will feel like a genius, <laughs> just an absolute genius. It'd be like gone like b- gone with blank wind. Three letters long, first letter T. I think you've been spending uh, too much time in waiting rooms at the dentist. Am I right? Yeah, I think so. T- talk show host blank Winfrey. <laughs> <laughs> it's set up. And I don't know how to spell uh, Oprah. So. <laughs> the, the one interesting thing I find about these magazines, Tiger Beat, Us Weekly, People, all of them, is that the a lot of times the people who read them will complain about paparazzi getting in celebrities' faces, and then they read these magazines who are the number one consumer of paparazzi photos. <laughs> uh, these magazines absolutely thrive <laughs> on, oh, here's a candid shot of Jim Carrey picking his nose, or... <laughs> Oh, did we just lose a Miller Miller? Yeah, we just lost a Miller Miller. There we go. There, there, we, go. Go. there we go. So you were All in right. this epic long rant, and then you disconnected, and I had to um, edit everything That's out. That's I do. Yeah, ex- except for the burp. I, I I had an epic burp. I'm going to leave that in the in the final mix. But anyways, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, well, these people complain about the paparazzi, and then they support the number one causes of the paparazzi. Yeah. But whatever. Let them do what they want. I don't care. That's why I'm a. Uh, that's why I'm a Lalbert is because I don't care what people do so long as it's relatively entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm all for for paparazzi. I mean, like you. You kind of deserve being in the spotlight. You know, you deserve all the things to come with it. That's just the way it is. And uh, and you asked for it. Yeah. They, you asked. She was asking for it. She she was asking for that picture to be plastered all over Us Weekly of her picking her nose. She deserves it. Yeah. Every inch yep. she was asking for it. I mean, just yeah. look at what she's wearing. Yeah, dumb whore. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I kid the dumb whores. I kid those dumb whores. Yeah, but Us Weekly, Tiger Beat. And it's all, the, the meme also subtly says uh, that political media has become basically Tiger Beat magazine, which <laughs> I don't think many people would quarrel with uh, as a point. Yeah, I would agree. With, I agree with that. I agree yeah. with that. Yeah, I. But of the, of the of the articles in Tiger Beat, I thought the democratic socialism so much cooler than regular socialism <laughs> was probably the most hardest hitting mm. political journalism that there was. Yeah. It turns out that in order to, uh, have in order to go from regular socialism to democratic socialism, what you do is you say the words, "the people" repeatedly, <laughs> uh, and, then, and then that oh. makes it democratic. Oh, and then, of course, ninety nine percent and one percent. Or no, the top ten percent of the top one percent. Yeah. If, if you say that enough Wait, times, ninety nine point nine percent now. Is it, or it's ninety nine percent, and then you would talk about the top one percent of the one percent, or top ten percent of the one percent, or something, some some kind of top one percent, some percentage of the top one percent. You just we, we just just throw some numbers around, percent of percent, percentage of percent, and that's the bad people. But if you have like ninety nine, then that's good for some reason. I don't know why, but you just keep saying that, and, and people will get confused and go like, "Yeah, that point was it two percent? I forget. It's it's that small minority. Like minorities suck. I mean, did I say that out loud? <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. Listen. Uh, okay. So here's the thing about percentages. Uh, 1% controls 99%. Mm. And 2% controls... See, I don't know. Yeah. That might that, that's a good campaign slogan. One percent controls ninety nine percent. Two percent controls. Wait, hold on. I don't know what were we talking about. Vote Bernie. Hashtag. Please donate. There's one. Th- there's one campaign hat for Bernie that's made up to look like the Make America Great Again hat. I don't know if you've seen this hat or not, but it says, is it Make the Empire Bernie Great Sanders Again? Is, nope. Okay. It says Bernie Sanders is a cute old man who wants to do good things for his country and i think we should let him (laughs) okay (laughs) which is the dumbest reason to vote for somebody for president well Uh, was wasn't mccain just a cute old man but then when he was running everything was like oh he's gonna die in office and we're gonna have his vice president run that'd be terrible we didn't vote for his vice president we voted for him he's 80 years old oh bernie sanders you're 90 Ah. all right come on in let's have have some tea you're a sweet and Bernie little got around man. that whole vice president. Bernie got around that whole vice president thing by never getting close to the nomination, and therefore <laughs> never having to name your vice presidential nominee. See, <laughs> that was shrewd on Bernie's part. And then who will we get? If you Elizabeth get- Warren, who's basically the left wing Palin, right? Yeah. Oh, I went on a Facebook rant about Elizabeth Warren today, and about how I don't, okay. So I'm originally from Ohio. Don't let the full set of teeth throw you off. <laughs> and uh. I literally think I I, can, I cannot name one of my relatives in Ohio that would ever consider voting for Elizabeth Warren just because she claimed to be Native American when she clearly isn't to get her career ahead. Uh, and I don't think it's ridiculous to say that without the, that pre- preferential status that she got, that she would probably be an adjunct law professor and probably not at Harvard, but probably at like. Suffolk University, and I went to Concordia University, Michigan, come for short for those of you acronym fans at home. Uh, <laughs> so I'm obvious, like my school's acronym is come. So I'm obviously not a huge elitist when it comes to when it comes to uh, schools and things like that. But the fact is, she wouldn't have been dean of Harvard Law School. But the fact is, when she was there, Harvard could say, oh, we have a minority as our dean. That minority, of course, being the Scots-Irish Elizabeth with war uh <laughs> with one who was claiming that she millions had percent yeah test. and the and her and elizabeth warren supporters are the first people to whenever there's any sort of racial conflict smack people down for racism but when this woman's faking minority status for her entire career to get ahead that's somehow fine because she supports a 27 dollar an hour minimum wage yeah. <laughs> okay absolutely ridiculous <laughs> I, pocahontas warren i can't stand her she's awful yeah, it, it, yeah. I've always um, heard like people and, like and always kind of bragging was, like, "Oh, I, you know, I'm I'm one sixteenth Native American." It's like that that means you're not. It really <laughs> means that you're not really. Yeah. Like technically, yeah, 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 yeah. like I technically like you know like my great grandfather was Native American, but that makes me nothing because I'm adopted. But it's kind of cool to say like, "Oh yeah, my great grandfather was Native American." Yeah. Okay. Well, what you do. You need to get you need to get one of those like comprehensive racial tests where they swab your cheek and then give you the printout because when Trump becomes president, everyone's going to need to have one. And anybody who crosses a uh, he's like, oh, you know, the problem with Hitler was the problem with Hitler was that he didn't have any of this technology that we have today. Now we know exactly how Mexican someone is. And uh, if you test a certain number, uh, you get on the bus and then you get out of the country. <laughs> You're really just itching for me to do. The fe- you're itching to, for me to do a try. I, I am. I'm trying to beg you. Uh, <laughs> well, frankly, we're going to get I, everyone I, at 23 I, and Me uh, test, and everybody's going to have to be taken. And frankly, frankly, if you're like one tenth of one percent of African American, I'm, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to take you back to Africa because, frankly, frankly, that's what just needs to happen. And unfortunately, that means Morocco, you're first to go. And be, I'm sorry. I mean, you've done some great work, but frankly. I don't like I don't like I don't like the, the dockies. Yeah. Yeah. And uh people get <laughs> MSNBC will get all offended and then people will act like that's the most insightful thing ever said as long as Trump said it. Yeah. You know? Somebody else he gets he gets a he gets it, it's funny because people that are so against giving people preferential treatment will give unlimited preferential treatment to Trump. 
politics makes when when people say politics makes strange bedfellows, what but what they mean by strange bedfellows is unlimited exceptions for people who agree with them. That's what they mean by strange bedfellows. <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't. I just you can don't. say whatever you want, and as long as 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 long as you protect my feels and your political beliefs, you know, that's <laughs> and, cool. and free twenty three of me tests, to her- of course. Exactly, and your free twenty three and me test, my, my free test. Maybe that's see. Maybe that'll be in the next next month's Tiger Beat. Is how Bernie's going to give free racial test to everyone <laughs> to make sure that you're truly deserving of being an American. I think that'll be, be in the Trump edition. I don't. I don't know. I don't think Bop would carry that. I think that's probably going to be more of a um, sixteen. That's Us Weekly. Us Weekly. Trump would be uh, Us it, Weekly. It's us, it's, if it's Us Weekly, then the headline Ooh. is going to be What's Twenty Three and Me. <laughs> And why you should care. <laughs> what an ethnicity. And Cosmo is going to be the like. The largest word we've ever printed in Us Weekly, ethnicity. How to get him to love the one-tenth of black that you are. <laughs> would be in Cosmo, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which law schools you could get into with your one-tenth black <laughs> status. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so we're yeah definitely there, there needs to be more there needs to be more magazines there needs to be and there need to be free because frankly that's that's well, i'm turning into trump actually now yeah if, so you, was, look at, <laughs> if you look at the bottom corner it's free it, mm-hmm. the the bernie sanders ver- version of edition of tiger bob is free in the u.s but once you cross the border and go into canada it'll cost you a loony it's a dollar north of canada and somebody noted they said hey that's quite the exchange rate <laughs> and I, I gave him a, a mini lull. I laughed a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you noticed that everything that shows the, the, the dollar amounts on, on like a book or something, it's always one dollar more in Canadian. So I was just like, eh, what's one plus zero? One. One dollar yeah, for Canadians. One. Yeah. Yeah. A loony. You have to put it in language <laughs> they can understand. You have to tell them it's a loony. <laughs> Yeah, I think I like. Quid See, that's the reason that goddamn coins wind up in our country is because we say we don't we don't say keep your goddamn coins out of our we don't say keep your goddamn loonies out of our country. <laughs> we say keep your goddamn coins out of our country, and they're like, "What's a coin, eh?" And we're like, "Oh, I, I you people," and they're like, "Oh, what do you mean, you people, eh?" And uh, yep, then it gets all bogged down. Yeah, I guess they got a new like five dollar piece that they're that they're talking about, saying like, "Ah, oh, how dare we is it get a goddamn another- coin?" Yes, it's a coin, and it's blue. It's like blue and oh, silver. Jiminy Christmas! It's like one of those coins where it's like um, it has like a like it's two if pieces. If you look at it from a certain angle, ring. it's gold though. Is it? Or you're, you're no, I'm, me. that was a you're dress me. joke. Oh, oh, I get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I could care less but, about. Oh, that, what's the new meme that's been going around that's been driving me crazy? Is the um, you know how do, how do the dogs wear pants? Oh, it's driving me crazy. It's like the worst meme ever. Have you seen this yet? It's a, yeah, it's stupid. Yeah, and people have been. It's stale. It's not. It's it is not the least bit wet. It's not dank. No, it's not. Even when I first saw it, I was know? like, "This is." I didn't even know it was a meme. I just I just saw the original thing, and I was like, "This is dumb." And then I keep seeing like different Here's iterations of it. And I'm like, come on, this is what we're all globbing onto. It was a dress, and now this. Like, can we just have one dank meme be popular with the normies? Can we just have one, please? <laughs> but no, we can never I, get one. I understand. I understand this podcast isn't really meant for a liberal audience, but yeah. I want to issue a standard challenge out there that if there are liberals out there who are capable of making memes that are even the slightest bit dank. Please hit me up, Miller twice on tw- on on Twitter, King of Bolo ties on Instagram. Hit me with any of these memes because I I have a feeling that there have to be, like statistically there has to be somebody with liberal beliefs out there who's willing to make dank memes and who's capable of making dank memes and I just don't see them. Uh, they can't all be as terrible as the memes that Occupy Democrats puts out. Those are the <laughs> worst memes on the all of the. They might as well make them on Microsoft Paint. Um. They're so whack. It's like, oh, here's a bl- here's a black and ye- black and yellow quote, which is to steal from the yak farmers. Let's be honest. Yeah. But here's a black and yellow quote Lobberts. of some wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Let's let's get one thing straight here. Yak farmers. That's that's a term that we use with the freedom fiends. We're not on the freedom fiends. We're lolberts here. <laughs> <laughs> Yak farmers, that's a little derogatory oh, for I this in my, in my everyday lexicon. Yeah, it's it's very yeah. triggering for this show. But go, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, did I trigger somebody? I'm well, sure good, someone I'm would a goddamn be. Goddamn edge lord. <laughs> oh, you shit lord, edge lord. Yeah, can't handle it. Oh yeah, 
cuck You better donate yeah. because no one's going to pay me to use the N-word on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> I, I, Chris Catwell literally said on his show, you, you, you have to donate because there's not a lot of people out there going out and calling people niggers on Twitter. I'm like, wrong. There's a lot of people. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of people who think they're entitled to a salary for doing so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> There's a whole lot of people out yeah. there doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And you can actually say that on the show. If in that context, I'll allow it. <laughs> but <laughs> All right. <yeah. laughs> as long as you're not actually calling someone you gotta, that. You gotta, if you're, you're just talking donate. about someone donate. calling people that, yeah, I'm okay with that. But yeah. Anyways, go ahead. <laughs> I don't edit anything Are we still out. talking about Yak Farmer? Oh, no. <clears throat> Wrong. Lawberts, oh, wrong show. We're take we're too busy taking That's- back Lawberts on this show. We don't have time to take so- else some something else back. We'll leave that for the end. I'll go. Oh yeah, please, do you think? Okay, if all right, l- l- let me throw a hypothetical at you, Jim. Okay, if you and I were both transgendered, and we were on a show called The Flaggots, right? <laughs> uh, but do wait, you think but trans people at, aren't flaggots? At, 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 they're not flaggots. They're trans, and they can be flaggots on. T- I am- I don't know. They're they, 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 could, they could be straight. Um, they could be straight. They could still like women. I don't think that, that's straight either. I'm confused. <sighs> I need yeah, my yeah. safe space. Maybe that puts space. you as in the queue. Okay. And I don't mean the line. I mean the queue <laughs> in the LGBTQ. Okay. Uh, yep. But that's fine. Whatever. Anyway, if, if we were running that show, let's. All right. Let's say you and I were both gay dudes, uh, which. Not the case. Uh, yeah, only I'm one of us is. Sexual. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> ah. Go on. Triggered. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let's say we were both. Let's say we were both doing that show, and we called the show the Flaggets. All right, so okay. we're not transgendered anymore. We're just standard issue gay. Uh, it's so gays. boring now. And, and we and, and we called so the show privileged. the Flaggets. Do you think that would be the the only term that we reclaimed? No, liberals don't stop at reclaiming one term. They will reclaim ten words in one conversation with them. That's uh, true. Normally, yeah, they'll That's... reclaim dyke and also bitch and also you know. Yeah, land. but but black oh, people oh, just didn't take. Sitting. They don't care. But black people didn't take back the word colored. So, yeah. <laughs> I think they only took back one word. I don't think they took back any of the other slang that came after him. So I think you're wrong. All right, I feel I feel that what might what might be good for donations is if you, <laughs> after the words "black people didn't take back the word colored," were to say, "So we should bring back colored drinking fountains." Am I right, fellas? Please because <laughs> uh, that seems to be the way to fame yeah uh, uh, and, of, and of course what was this uh the, was it the black lives matter was it black lives matter or it was one of the, one of these groups that uh was at princeton saying that they had like this list of demands and one of the things they wanted to bring back is black only safe spaces exclusively black yeah, people only safe I re- spaces so i heard about that where i mean not only do you have the alt-right calling for segregation but we also have the alt-left calling for segregation and this is bringing me back to this horseshoe thing that i that I, I kind of initially blew off at first, like, oh, this is, you know, whatever. I just like the Nolan chart better. But I'm starting to buy into this whole horseshoe dynamic of, of political spectrums. Because the alt-right is just You're as crazy barrier. as a social justice warrior. And I'm starting to just call them, like, what they are. Like, I'll just, I'll call the the the, the, le- uh, the social justice warrior the alt-left, because they hate that, because they know what the alt-right is. And then I call, like, the, uh, <laughs> the alt-right social justice warriors, because they act the same. They do the same thing. They pretty much want the same thing. Except kind of like reversed, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, we want segregation, but just for these reasons, <laughs> like we want we want special who words was it? for these reasons. Do you know who it was who wrote that Hitler was the first millennial because he was an art school dropout who wanted to control the way everybody did everything? Yeah. And he was half Jewish. Uh, All right. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that might have been John Nunn. Uh, a Philly comedian, but he, he, yeah, he took a lot. Of, he took a he took a beating for that. That's the thing as a comedian is, uh, if y- you take a lot of beatings, if you are willing to take these people on, because you have to remember that activism is the opposite of comedy. I cannot stress this enough. Activists hate humor. The humor they use will only ever be in relation to some cause that they're seeking. They will there there will never be like any sort of spontaneous funny thing that happens just for its own sake, just because laughing is fun. Uh 
because they're anti-fun. They think that most of if you've got time on planet Earth, you should be spending it writing everything and controlling everybody else, etc. Yeah, uh, it, I guess so it kind of goes. Activists hate yeah. comedy. I think it kind of goes into the and whole, doing comedy for activists is a waste of your goddamn time. Yeah. So don't ever do it. I think I think the uh, whole like just Jeffrey Tucker thing when he was talking it. about how how like the only thing that's really good better about fascism is that you can eat, but everything else is still terrible. So it's not really doesn't really matter too much. I think that's kind of the same with the activism part. It's like at least the alt right can take a joke. At least the alt right can make a funny parody song. The left, no, not so much. No, they but, can't. Have you heard Cantwell's Pinochet song? <laughs> that, that was they, terrible. They can, sometimes. That was terrible. That was beyond but I'm terrible. sorry, but Maroku has some really good stuff. Uncuck the Right, not so much. I don't. I have no idea who that is. Okay. I will, I will link one song in there, and it, I'm warning you, it is it is like the most offensive thing ever, but you're going to laugh so hard that you're not going to be, you're going to be you know too busy laughing to be songs? offended. You know who has some great songs? And I say this as a human, as a sumosexual, is Shirley Phelps Roper. Her YouTube oh, channel are you kidding? is sopping wet dank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I totally. What was it? Um, we are the world parody was just beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And if yeah. I, I wish I got something set up that way, I would have played it. Oh, on the, <laughs> it is really that great. There was a mini. The, I know I know you're not a huge sports balls fan, but there was a mini scandal this week because security at whatever the stadium is in Jacksonville, asked a fan to take down his God hates Jags sign. Uh, <laughs> for the Jacksonville Jaguars, who were 5-11 and 11 this year. <laughs> yeah. I'm, in, I'm into, I'm into, I don't know if it's not sports ball, because it's not a ball, it's a puck. Uh, I'm into sports puck. Sports pucks. I'm into sports pucks, but I'm not into to, to sports balls. Um I don't know. See, my thing, my thing is basketball, and, and uh, uh, my job has made me into a compulsive gambler because I listen to the NBA while I uh, cook. I cook at night. <laughs> I, I, that's cook, not cook. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm paid. Someone gives me good money to stand there and watch my wife get plowed by a black man. No. Um, while you I, watch I basketball. I make food for drunken hipsters. Okay. Yeah. I make food for drunken hipsters at a concert venue, and the music is uniformly terrible. So I will generally put on headphones, and I will listen to a game. And what I learned is that if you have generally the cost of a movie ticket or less, it doesn't have to be a lot of money, 2 to $10, depending on how sure you are, on a basketball game, that basketball game will be more exciting than a movie that you paid an equivalent amount of, amount of money to go see in the theater. Because, oh, man, does it get interesting. Uh, and what I do is I bet on point totals. So the combined totals that both teams get uh, over under that given amount. And generally, I'll bet on the under because I'll take the opposite side that everyone's betting on. Uh, and if a number gets too high, I'll bet the under. So normally, about 60% of the time, I'd say I bet on the under. So I want low a low amount of points to be scored. And I will stand in that kitchen and make hipsters their french fries and curse because I'm rooting for nothing to happen in the back. In the game, and I and someone just scored a three pointer, and that's absolute <laughs> ass for me and my two dollar profit margin. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm more into hockey, yep. and and the I I would disagree with you that basketball is interesting. It's not. It's people constantly constantly scoring all the whole time. Oh, another one. Oh, another two points. Oh, oh, three points. Yeah. Hockey, it's like when when someone scores, it's like oh, it's a big deal. But you're like you're also like kind of waiting for a fight to break out as well. So you have that. So that's it's like one step up from soccer. And soccer is too big. the The field is I would too say damn more than big. one. I think soccer is an ass sport. It is an ass sport. Come at come, come at me, third worlders. Yeah. I don't care. Donald Trump. Th see, this but see, is how I'm gonna get elected. This is how Donald Trump's gonna get elected. Is someone's gonna try to get me to like <laughs> soccer? And frankly, I mean, soccer. It's you know, I can understand it. It's 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 just boring. I'm sorry. It's too big. No, but that's the the field is too big. With a ball. There's no hitting. You can't use your hands at all. Uh, you, you can't do anything. And you know, but you know, hockey. There's punching going on. There, there. You know, everyone's ramming each other against a wall. Against a wall. It, it's perfect. You know, it's it's great. I, so I'm all for that. It's basically I got XFL. With my sister. It's like XFL, but there's no need for like another league. It's just it's already right there. It's not XFL because it's been around for more than two seasons, <laughs> and it's still there. It could, it could it could survive for more than two years. But see, uh, I would be I willing to watch basketball. Not well, huge. I'm gonna say like I would watch yeah. basketball if they actually brought a real world arch rivals 
you know, where people are punching each other in the face instead of like, you know, just trying to steal the ball, just punch him, knock him out, get the ball and go score. Yeah. I, I would be, I'd be more yeah. than happy to watch that, but not with, not yeah. what's going on here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, w- I was at my nephew's soccer game and, uh, there were a lot of parents standing around and I tried to take betting action on the game. Uh, and I got in trouble with my sister for doing so. Uh, but mainly, I wanted to set the line absurdly high for the game. I wanted to set it at like six and a half for the team total. Mainly to entice the parents to all bet on the under. Mainly because I wanted to see a youth soccer game where it was all nine-year-olds, where all the parents were rooting for no goals to be scored. Uh, I thought that would have been particularly great. But alas, my plans were dashed by my sister, uh, who was afraid of the cops because she's a statist mm-hmm. yeah that's how it always goes yeah, yeah. statism statism ruins everything including <laughs> including your ability to bet on nine-year-old soccer games yeah but see if this was vegas that would have been a different story you just go to the bookies and say hey you know there's a there's a sports game going on you know what do you what odds you taking come on I'm sure you can yeah get, you can get what some odds standings you the, what yeah. odds you take it on the nine-year-old because i just gave a kid a kit kat to take a dive <laughs> Yeah, uh, going to sit out the entire second half of the game and go home with a Reese's peanut butter cup, and I'm going to win seventy five dollars. Because they would set the limit absurdly low; like you wouldn't be allowed to bet more than a hundred dollars on that game. But somebody, somebody would write would 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 make you a book on it, and yeah. then they'd probably take your action off as soon as soon as one player got mysteriously injured. Yeah. Like, oh, that's the first time we've ever seen someone get concussed running a lap. But. Uh, <laughs> So it goes. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't allow betting on sports where people have easy access to the players. Mm. Sports Gambling <laughs> Podcast is one of my favorite podcasts as well. Uh, really, really good. Really, really good podcast. And they come out every week with their picks. And It's two comedians from L.A., Ryan Kramer and Sean Green. Uh, one of them's from Philly also, originally. But yeah, very good podcast if you're into that sort of bullshit. Yeah. I don't think a lot of my a lot of these listeners are. I think a lot of them come from like my YouTube channel, so they're probably going to be more. Yo, interested. I also yeah. plug the black guy who tips on Freedom Feed, yeah. so I'm I'm real big <laughs> on. Hey, here's a podcast you're probably never going to listen to. Go listen to it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So none of you are going to go listen to the sports gambling podcast, and I don't care, but I'll give them a plug anyway. Yeah. You know, you live your life, I'll live mine, and we'll all be lulberts, and we'll I'll see you all in hell. <laughs> Yes, there's a shirt right there. All right, fine. You we'll your be... life, I'll be mine, and we'll all be Lulberts, and I'll see you in hell. <laughs> I can actually make a shirt from that. I can. I can do it. I can make it happen. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> or if I may be so bold, put it on a flag and give the snake a bolo tie. <laughs> Uh, bolo I just tie. got a new shipment of bolo ties, and they are sopping wet dank. I keep on saying sopping wet dank, but it's true. Uh, this old man died, and his estate <laughs> sold off all of his bolo ties on eBay. And that's where I'm waiting in the wings. So I don't know what happens in the afterlife, but I know that in the afterlife, I get your bolo ties. Because so many times... Living in a heavily Puerto Rican neighborhood, have I seen uh, an old Puerto Rican man walking around with a bolo tie? And I'm like, oh, man, oh, man, wait until eight months from now when you die of a massive stroke and your family's looking to get rid of all those bolo ties. I'm going to be standing there with a fistful of singles uh, waiting for the (laughs) bolo tie gods to rain down more gifts. I got a bunch of Freemason bolo ties. I got ones with really nice stones in them. Uh, Oh, you got a Freemason? My bolo tie collection is on. I have a Freemason bolo tie. A Freemason bow tie? I have a Freemason bow tie for... I could do an entire month of Freemason bow ties <laughs> every single day. No repeats. Because uh, ma- masonry, you'll learn, is like... It, it's a little bit like... Well, it is a fraternity. But much like a college fraternity makes shirts for everything, uh, there was a period from the 80s up until the mid-90s where the Freemasons just made bolos for everything. <laughs> so every event they had, there was a bow tie for. And they're generally pretty rare because they only made like 10 or 12 of them. So uh, you don't see a lot of repeats in Freemason bolo ties either. Uh, I have a bunch from Nevada. Nevada made a ton of bolos. Really? Uh, their Freemasons did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I'm going to have to swoop one off of you. So. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna have to get one yeah. off of you. 
I'm gonna tra- we'll trade you for our Libertarians yeah, Against Humanity card deck. I think that's what we're going to do. <laughs> or a flag. Yep. I think that, yeah. that that is the Lalbert exchange rate. <laughs> one Nevada bolo tie for... <laughs> for one deck of Libertarians Against Humanity. Libertarians Against... against- <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but have yeah, you yeah. ever tried wearing that's, one of those things at like a, at an Alex Jones like protest or the Fed or something like that? Do they have a Fed in Philly? Yeah. I'm sure they do. I went to I met Alex Jones at Bilderberg. Oh, that's that's how deep of the rabbit hole I used to be. Oh wow. Um, yeah, I went to Bilderberg. It was really funny. I got on Spanish language TV when <laughs> they said, "Well, <laughs> I got on Spanish. Well, I got on Spanish TV come- too because I, uh, I was waiting in line for the." Uh, uh, White Castle to open <laughs> in Las Vegas, and I was standing in line, and I was like, "Oh, there, there's Univision, or is it Univision or Telemundo? It was one of those ones." And they came around yeah. and was like interviewing people, and I'm like, "I don't speak Spanish, but yeah, I I ate it when I was in San Francisco." Or San there's Francisco. a really San, respected San, San journalist Louis. for one of them. I think it's I I don't know who Jorge Ramos works for. I think it's Univision. Uh, but Donald yeah. Trump basically told him to to go get effed, <laughs> and uh, everybody was like all outraged at that. And then the uh, then everybody forgot because Trump did something even more outrageous the next day. Uh, he's a little bit Trump's a little like Marilyn Manson. I don't know if you remember Marilyn Manson back in like ninety six, ninety seven. I don't know who that but is. But every time you, of course, I know who it is. Yeah. I don't know who. <laughs> <laughs> you darn kids and your Marilyn Manson these days. And your and your uh, hula hoops and your Nintendo video games and your BLTs. Oh. Everybody would be all mad about Marilyn Manson about something, and then he would do something even more outrageous. Or like Stern. Uh, Stern in the late 80s, early 90s. Oh, yeah. Howard Stern. Same same sort of thing. Yeah. Wow. Uh, he was having some lady have a orgasms on a my radio. Edge. I'm calling the FCC. Yeah. Yep. The Federal Cuckoldry Commission. <laughs> Pretty much. Anyways, go ahead. They they send a dude over to have sex with your wife. Yeah. What you know? What's interesting about the FCC is that they they'll they won't allow someone to say bitch on the radio in a certain sense. I guess they won't let you say faggot, even though you're a sumo sexual. A got her faggot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they won't let Derek J say it either. So it's not. You know, they're not just picking on you. See, not letting me say it is one thing, but not letting Derek J say it, I believe, is entirely a whole other thing. Uh, I think there's, I think there's levels to this shit, and I, if you don't want to let me say faggot because I'm a mean spirited person like that, I completely understand. But if you don't want to let Derek J say faggot, yeah, I mean that's, that's just, a little cruel. Derek yeah. J should get to should get to call anyone a faggot that he wants. <laughs> But uh, yeah, they won't allow that. But if you speak Spanish, you can say whatever you want, whatever you want in Spanish. And basically, like all of these shows that are in Spanish, is basically Howard Stern uncensored. Like if you could just take his satellite thing, translate it in Spanish, and then play it on the air, and you could totally do that. But God forbid you say faggot, you know, or what was the other thing we were told we couldn't say? Straight white dudes are being oppressed. Yeah, there was there was some other thing that we were told we weren't allowed to say, and I can't remember what it was. I think it was Trump. Yeah, I think Trump was it. <laughs> I know that Trump was banned yeah, from I'm Freedom gonna be, Fiends. I'm gonna, <laughs> I, tr- yeah, Trump got banned from Freedom Fiends, but I'm going to be mad the day they ban cock. <laughs> oh, man, am I going to be mad the day they ban cock. Uh, and I don't even use the word. I like the only, the only times I call someone a cock is either ironically or when it's uh, speaking to somebody in their own language, where yeah. all they're capable of is calling other people cocks. So you have to greet them in the language that they speak which is complete <laughs> ribald cuckoldry so wait you are a christian of course and you don't like cucks of course not okay so explain joseph <laughs> what are you trying yeah. to say yeah yeah but uh yeah yeah well i'm not i'm not i'm not a christian i'm an anarchist atheist asshole mm-hmm. <laughs> oh god Give it, give it another six months, and you're going to change your name to Realist. And next thing you know, you're just going to start calling people cucks and faggots. That's going to be your entire show, you cuck faggot. How dare you call me a cuck, you faggot? That's that's going to be the entire show. It's going to be the entire show of Lawberts in the future. The cuckold yeah. faggotry hour with Steve <laughs> Miller Miller. It's the newest. Yeah, Lawberts spun off of Freedom Phoebes. <laughs> Freedom Phoebes, Phoebes. See, Phoebes. Why can't I ever say the goddamn name of the show right? I do the intros and I'm like, yeah, Trigger Weebs, this is the Freedom Morning, <laughs> or what have you. Uh, but uh, I can't ever say the name of the show that I'm on correctly. No. Anyway, Freedom Fiends. 
So. Marvel spins off of that, and then the cuckold, the 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 cuckold faggotry hour. I think I think it would be the with, the with Steve Miller, Mi- the cuck- Steve Miller Miller and ten black men fucking a Cambodian. I, th- I think that the, it has to be agenda because that's that's the racial uh, the racial agenda. No, radical agenda is that the name of Campbell's show? So it'd be the racial agenda. So, that's the name of his show. Yeah. So it would be it would be the uh, the cuckold homosexual agenda. <laughs> so, just, yeah. Yeah. The faggot agenda, starring yeah. Steve, starring Steve Miller, Miller, a Cambodian dude, and nine black guys on the Cambodian. <laughs> I'll just watch. I'll just watch. Go ahead, have your fun. Yeah, you'll just you'll just watch because you're a conservative. <laughs> uh. <coughs> uh yeah, and if and I so- noticed a lot of our. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I noticed a lot of our conversations come back to cuckoldry, though, and yeah. that's kind of sad. But they start <laughs> off with Trump, and when you start with Trump, like it's really not that far of a leap. Yeah. I, I I hope Trump wins. Who won 2015's Person of the Year? Was it Angela Merkel or some bullshit? I don't know. I think <laughs> I thought, people used to care who Person of the Year was. Nobody gives a shit anymore. Caitlyn Jenner, who was it? Yeah, I think it was Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> Was it Caitlyn Jenner? Yeah, I remember everybody was up in arms like, oh, my goodness, I can't believe they're wasting the person of the year. It's like George Bush won person of the year, and he almost lost, almost lost to Osama bin Laden the same year. You know, I think it was 2001. He almost lost to Osama bin Laden. Serious. I mean, like, they, uh, they also said every American woman was man of the year, and then they changed it to person of the year. Then they said uh, Hitler. Uh, FDR was nominated like three times. It, it, it just it, it is the These most didn't go in order by the way it, yeah. it it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't osama then bush then person of the year oh and by the way when you're filling out a job application anywhere you should absolutely write that you were times 2007 person of the year because in 2007 the person of the year was you and it had a mirrored cover really so you 100 percent have the right to claim that you were person of the year Nice. Uh, and if you were protesting in 2011, you also have the right to to claim person of the year because the American protester was the person of the year in 2011. Hold on, I'm going to ask Siri who person of the year was. Siri, who was Times person of the year for 2015? And let me think about that. Here's what I found on the web for Times person of the year for 2015. Are they this lazy that they haven't even announced yet? It's got. Uh, it says. Shortlist announced. <laughs> Shortlist. It's 2016 already. I should, by the time the year's over. Okay, so it looks like it's Putin, Trump, <laughs> Jenner, Black Lives Matter, what? <laughs> Abu Akhtar Al Bagat. Oh, the leader of ISIS. Black okay. Lives Matter. Kayla Jenner. Travis. Travis Kalanick. You know who that is? No. The CEO of Uber. Okay. Uh, CEO of Uber. Angela Merkel. Putin. Hassan Rouhani, who as president of Iran, is seeking to give it, bring his country out of pariah status. <laughs> That's like making America great again. Good luck with that. Uh, and repair its sanctioned crippled economy by pursuing a nuclear deal with the West. And Donald Trump will be unveiled on Wednesday, on today, Wednesday morning. Oh, oh nice. snap. Get excited. Oh. oh, wait, hold on. This is this article is from December 7th. It's already been announced. <laughs> um, so let's find out who it is. And it is. Oh, please be Trump. Please be Trump. Please be Trump. Because that oh, would, that would ups- or at least ISIS. ISIS. I think I, I think this should tie it with Trump and ISIS. I think that would be the most perfect. It is Trump and ISIS tied. It, okay. And the, they, they had a vote <laughs> on their website. And when they let people vote, uh, <laughs> Angela Merkel came in third to last behind Hassan Rouhani uh, of Iran and Caitlyn Jenner. Uh, uh, they, those are the only two that got less votes than Merkel. But Merkel wound up winning the entire thing. This is lame. Uh, this is why no one cares. But anyway, I'd hope that Trump would be person of the year and that that cuck would be word of the year and that the cover of time would just be Trump in front of an American flag and the huge cuck right at the bottom. Right <laughs> Uh, I think yeah. cuck NATO needs to be say- word of the year. I'm sorry, cuck NATO needs to be nothing. <laughs> cuck NATO. Nothing would nothing would say both America and 2015 more so than uh than than, <laughs> cuck than Trump. Trump with cuck. Yeah, cuck Trump. Cuck Trump. Yeah, and um, 
Carl I'm a member Trump. of this group on Facebook where <laughs> I'm a member of a group on Facebook where it's just people posting pictures of their genitals and uh somebody posted a picture of their soft penis in a vase full of dead flowers and <laughs> The man captioned the picture, soft dick in dead flowers. And somebody responded, I'm a painter. Do you mind if I make an oil painting of this? Because I feel that nothing speaks to our country and our time more than a painting of a dead dick sitting in a box with some dead flowers. This is why uh, cavemen drew on walls. <laughs> yeah. Someday. So for soft dick with dead flowers. That should be painted and sent to Donald Trump. Then Donald Trump could hang it on his wall. And they can do his little stupid YouTube videos. Yeah. Do his little Trump videos, you know, waving his hands around, talking about how we need to get rid of all the Mexicans with, you know, a dead dick and a jar of, or a vase of dead flowers. I am willing to, I I want, we should start a Kickstarter campaign. We should start a Kickstarter campaign. We got to make this happen. Let's do this. You know what I would like to see get made? I'd like to see someone make a documentary where they track down every Obama nodder from the 2008 and 2012 campaign. What is that? And do a where are they now? The Obama nodders were the what the people, usually white, usually middle-aged hippies, but not always, who had the job of standing behind Obama when Obama was on the campaign trail and nodding their head as vigorously <laughs> as possible every time Obama would make a point. Kind of like it was headbanging for really people that were really, really boring. Uh, or had a, or had a really low capacity for amazement. Like, oh man, he just said he was gonna do something. Uh, and he and didn't say they uh, would stand no, there no. and they wouldn't <laughs> and they would nod their heads. And I would like a documentarian to find these people, see how many uh, of them have jobs now, uh, see how many of their problems were solved by Obama, and how many of them have permanent neck and back damage uh, from nodding their heads so incredibly hard in agreement with Obama whilst uh, Obama was on the campaign trail. And how many of but them actually work for Trump now. One white dude's yeah. job. <laughs> yeah, and how many of them are cucking for Trump? <laughs> <laughs> That's the surprise twist at the end. It's like an M. Night Shyamalan documentary. <laughs> it turns out they're all cucking for Trump. Yeah. Start a kick yep. fund. <laughs> Start a Kickstarter for that. Let's do this. Yeah. They're like, well, I found this website called 4chan. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, it kind of made things a lot more clear to me. Yeah. That's what, that's, is, I'm sure that's how you found out about cuck, right? There you were, just letting yeah. just letting some bull come in and do your wife, and you go on the internet, you find 4chan, and oh my god, what have I been doing with my life? And then you vote for Donald Trump, and that's 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 how uh, Donald Trump <laughs> came to came to power, right? But your yeah. 4chaners found out the that's truth about the relationships. <laughs> I can't be like these people. Um, my sister posted a picture on the internet recently. Oh, that's 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 that's, that's always a... the worst. That's always the worst. Family members post. It's terrible. Yeah. It was it well, this was particularly dank though. It had it was this kids science fair project and it mocked the science fair. And it was like, you know, here's the family's procrastination, here are sure signs you're in a science fair, crying, fighting, uh, <laughs> procrastinating. <laughs> Uh, all these, all these things, uh, and yeah, mocking the idea of the science fair. And <laughs> I thought, if this is an actual kid who made this and not like some, not some kid who got assistance from their parents, uh, that kid should be taken and should be put in a Soviet style meme camp so that they can be brought up to make memes by the greatest meme makers in the world so that that kid can grow up to defeat ISIS with memes. Because memes are going to defeat ISIS. I've laid out this theory before, and we need to be getting these kids from birth. And if you are 11 years old and self-aware enough and situationally aware enough that you're mocking the science fair with your science fair exhibit, then that should be your very last day at actual school. And from that point on, the, uh, your thugs should be doing morning <laughs> exercises every day to get them to the strength to contain a full day of memeing. Because people... Your normal man doesn't have thumbs as strong as mine because he doesn't meme sixty 
You know, I meme 65 hours a day. There's only 24 hours in a day, but I meme. I managed to meme 65 of them. That sounds like something Trump would say right there. <laughs> I, I think a great science fair project it's would incredible. be like psychoanalyzing all the kids that make volcanoes for science fairs <laughs> and say like, what's wrong with them? And that would be that would be the greatest science fair project that I would I would I'd slap a ribbon on that thing. Whatever it is, just slap a ribbon on it. Slap a ribbon. Slap a ribbon on it. You win. You win the science fair. You, now I don't have to ever look at these. You know, now I understand why every dumb kid on the planet wants to make a volcano for a science fair. Like, oh, you know how a science. And you don't even learn how, how a volcano works. You just learn how baking soda reacts to vinegar. That's all <laughs> That's all you learn. Science yeah. fails are. Science that doesn't teach you anything about no. volcanoes. Ain't no igneous rocks. I made a burglar alarm. No, you didn't. You made a burglar arm diorama. That's what you did. <laughs> Go, you home. Made- <laughs> Go home. Go home. Made a, I made a burglar alarm statist. I bet you your burglar alarm calls the cops. <laughs> it just dials 911. It doesn't even ring a bell. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't ring the private the private protection force. What's up? <laughs> yeah, it calls the Agra Police Protection Unit. It, it only rings that bell on their phone. Apu! Agorist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh God! Yeah, yeah. Force. Science fairs are always terrible. Terrible. Team terrible. and Capistan World Police. Yeah. I remember my sister actually won a science and fair. Capistan, fuck yeah! Coming around to let you do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> Cuck. Uh, <laughs> Cuck. Uh, yeah, my sister had won a science fair, and all the things <laughs> she did. And to had cock, yeah. The only thing she did was like put what? different amounts of salt in a, uh, in a in a in a in some plants, like a flower, and they all died except for the one that had no salt. And then the conclusion was, don't put salt in your plants. And then she won the science fair. She won the science fair from that. I, yeah, well, yeah. Science fairs are crap. State of science it's fairs. Not, it doesn't sound very fair to me. They should call it the science unfair. Am I right? Yeah. You know. Meanwhile, there's like yep. eight, eight, eight volcanoes. I was never one of those kids that made a volcano, though. I don't remember what I made, but it definitely I never made a volcano. Right, well, see, part of the beauty of going to a of going to a Christian school is that they really half-ass their science fairs uh, because they don't want you to get too into it. Otherwise, you might start questioning things that they that they accept a lot of money to teach you so uh your science fair rather than being like a month's long affair is this you know maybe it's a couple days and that's it i remember we had science week one time and whatever (laughs) you learned one week of science and then that's it but i actually did go to a a christian school for one semester of high school and then that was it my parents were like get them the fuck out as soon as this semester is over uh it was a um it was a uh it was a christian school and we had a science class and i used to bring like the science stuff back to my parents be like this is what they're teaching us in class it's all creationist nonsense and like i used to challenge the uh the the teacher and he ended up like giving me detention like almost every day. And I remember there was a couple instances where I remember I was like, or, or just like sarcastically mocked him for for giving me a stupid answer to a to a good question. And he was like, "Up, oh, you can have another detention." I'm like, "So what? I'm just not going to go to these things anymore." Like I got like twelve of them anyway. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. I, I I get the whole science in Christian school is a total joke. <sighs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was that bad. It was growl worthy. Um, but then I went back to public school and I was happy. I mean, when you when you go back to public school and you're happy, that really kind of tells you how bad Christian schools are. I guess. Yeah. Like, oh, at least it's at least it's believable. <laughs> at least the crap that I'm learning in civics well, is believable, right? <laughs> Well, there's a there was a uh, a a dude right here on my block that uh, had just gotten out of jail, and they released him from jail at like eleven at night or something ridiculous like that. And there was this loud party on the street, and I was about to do freedom feeds, and Michael Dean was like, "Oh, you need to quiet those dudes out on the street." I'm like, "Yo, like, there's nothing more appropriate than the background sound of a dude's party because he just got out from under state control." Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you're but not yeah. gonna shut down that party. <laughs> you want to talk about somebody who's feeding for freedom? Yeah, 
That'd be the perfect yeah. backdrop. Like, look, this is someone who just I, got it, free. Don't, from don't state. tell people to yeah. shut the fuck up if they're still on probation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how dare you? How dare you? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so the Trump, are we going to do the Trump for the bop? Or are we going to do Hillary Clinton for the bop? What are we doing for the bop? I I would say reserve bop for Hillary. Uh, uh, you don't want to waste that on somebody who's probably not going to get the nomination, and I don't think Trump is. No. Yeah, he's definitely going to lose Iowa. He's definitely going to lose Iowa. And if he loses Iowa, I, look, I can't understand how anybody who likes Trump is going to spend, like, multiple days going to caucuses. They're not going to do that. They're going to be like, oh, wait, I just can't no. vote for this guy. Oh, screw this. I'm going home. You know, it's only going to be the old little ladies. Oh, I like Jeb Bush. Oh, I like Ted Cruz. He seems like a nice young man. And they're, they're going to be the ones that are like, oh, I'm retired. I don't have to go to work. His tomorrow. dad's a pastor. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to go and they're going to stay in caucus the entire time. And they're not going to go, oh, that Trump, I don't like his hair. And that's it. Yeah, Trump's not going to win. And that's not only, it. But, yeah, but if he loses Iowa, like that whole aura that he has of, I never lose. Uh, frankly, I'm a winner. Everybody else here, they're losers. They're, they're frankly, frankly, they like to lose. And I don't lose. And he's going to lose Iowa. And everyone's going to be like, hmm, I thought, what was that thing about you not losing? And then they're going to like stop caring. And maybe the Keniacs oh, will. Yeah, people yeah. Are stop caring. And maybe the so Keniacs will get, get uh, Paul elected. And then that'll really kind of like take another shot at his ego. I mean, Paul's not going to win, but if he does win New Hampshire, it, you know, that's going to well, be a real big blow to Trump. Uh, <laughs> all right, here's a question: Who do you think the meter maids in in Keene are supporting for president? <laughs> I don't know. Isn't Campbell whoever, meter maid whoever now? they're voting for? I'll support. Uh, I don't know if they're unionized or not, but if you're a meter maid in Keene, New Hampshire, and you're listening to this, which I seriously doubt, please reach out to me and tell me uh, who you're supporting, because I will go vote on your behalf in, in Philadelphia, which doesn't matter, but neither does New Hampshire, but neither does anywhere. Yeah. And uh, just let, let me know, and because normally I sell my vote, I go on social media the day of the election and i say hey for those of you who think this election matters so much and it's so important uh paypal me money right now and i will take a picture i'll take a video of me voting for however you want so long as the money clears and funny all these people that think it's so so important aren't willing to put any money where their mouth is even in cases where they have a lot of money yeah uh and they could easily double their voting power uh, just by giving, you know, it, and I wouldn't, it wouldn't even take much. If you were to give me $10, I would take, you know, five minutes out of my day and go down there and do it. But nobody does. Nobody does. Yeah, dude, if if, if someone believe, seriously wants me to caucus. It's about egomania. Yeah, if someone wants me to caucus, I am down to caucus in Nevada. Well, caucusing is different. Yeah, but see, you're paying me a lot oh, of money crap. to caucus for three days. You there? Or, well, yeah, I'm here. Can you not hear me again? You ruined everything. Ah. <sighs> All right. Well, I guess we'll just wrap it up. Um, if you want to pay me to caucus for Rand Paul, uh, hashtag please Fiend donate. Phone. Fiend phone. Oh, did yep, you make here. it back? Okay, <laughs> I made it back. I got yeah. yeah, we should probably just wrap it up anyway. But yeah, if you want to, if you want us to, if you want me to caucus in Nevada, it's an early primary uh, caucus state. Uh, hashtag please donate. <laughs> Link is in the thing. Oh, yeah. hey, charge more for that. All right, yeah. caucusing is way more of a pain than going yeah. and pushing a lever. Yeah, uh, I'll smash that lever for whoever you want. But if you have to, if you want to pay Jim to like go and like actually interact with people and like put on this production like he cares, then yeah, you want me to go outside a little more. You really want me to go outside <laughs> my hermit cave? It's, but it's an it's yeah. an early primary state though. That's the thing. So yeah. you're getting value for your money with Jim. I'm giving you a Pennsylvania primary vote, which counts for very little. Yeah. and I'm a registered libertarian as the at the moment so unless you really care about austin peterson versus mcafee yeah. uh you know <laughs> that's cool it turns it, it it turns out tony styles has endorsed austin peterson oh and man oh man uh if i weren't in the if i weren't in the anybody but austin peterson camp before uh having the endorsement of a Serial liar who threatened to sue me for eight hundred thousand dollars with fictitious lawyers. That would definitely put me 
over the edge. Uh, Tony Socialist is a li- Tony Styles is a liar, a socialist, and his feet stink. Yeah. The end. Yeah. You, by the By the way, you're really gonna like it here because we all, we also encourage people to talk crap on other libertarians. <laughs> Where this is more than encouraged. Oh yeah. Yeah. Whereas you know Michael D. Tony like, Styles hey. is not is not a libertarian though. He's a con man. There's yeah. a difference. Yeah. Just, uh, just keep there, it kind of down with somebody who actually Molyneux, just a little bit, just not so much Molyneux bashing. You know, you could do it every once in a while. You know, I like Berwick. T- Keep it under one segment, please. You know, you can't do a whole show. We can. We actually had did a whole show about libertarian passion with uh, Matt Pritchard, which was great. I still listen to that one every once in a while. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have a uh, yeah. But I, I, I do not view Tony Styles as a libertarian because, one, he doesn't produce content. His whole angle is, I'm a talk show host. I produce these shows. Show me where these shows are. They don't exist. They're not on the internet. They're not anywhere. He used to do a show. He didn't. He didn't have rights to those shows. He still doesn't. They're not anywhere. You can't find them if you want to. It's a platform for him to beg for donations on based on false pretenses 100% of the time. He lied about the he lied about the IRS being after him. He lied about his friend going to jail for fo- for photographing a planned parenthood thing. He will, he's a serial liar for money and libertarianism is just one stop before he goes and becomes either a missionary or somebody who's an activist on behalf of human trafficking. Uh well, it hey, looks like it's it's I think Berwick, I think and, and he's, he's going to find a more fertile market where people give him money and then then he he will be gone. He will absolutely be gone. He should he should definitely go down the same route that Jeff Barrick's going, where he just says, "Hey, we got property in Chile. Come come buy, uh, give us millions of dollars." And oh yeah, bye. Or right. <laughs> thanks thanks for your money. Oh, you don't have water rights here. Enjoy. But anyways, we'll wrap it up. Did you want to plug anything? Are you still there? Yeah, okay. uh, I want to plug a new website that will be coming soon, but I can't announce the name of the website. But it's I'm not. De- a plug. I'm definitely taking my. To- I'm taking. I'm taking my Tony Styles trolling to the next level with okay. a website very soon. Okay. And uh, uh, all, uh, the other thing I wanted to plug is another man's wife while he watched. Uh, <laughs> if only, only if that wife is a uh, sumo wrestler, right? It's a it's a full cup thing though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right, take I don't know if Smallbirds has a weatherman, but he just issued a cucknado. <laughs> yeah. Or oh wait, for, wrong for, show for all of the. T- oh wait, wrong <laughs> show. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT NoGov license. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason, in, in this country, and in the most of the Western world, it's okay to just judge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about Fiend Phone. FiendPhone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com, but we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com, F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com, Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. FiendPhone, I never knew remote audio could be this good.